In the southeast corner of Tasmania, 500 metres off the Tasman Peninsula lies Tasman Island. Part of the Tasman National Park, the island is a sculpted outcrop of 120 hectares, capped by a plateau and surrounded by 250 metre high dolerite cliffs and extensive boulder fields. A stunning landscape of rugged beauty, the island has long been an important landmark, serving as a lighthouse since the early 1900s. Today, that lighthouse is fully automated, but the impacts of human habitation remain. Cats brought to the island by keepers have become established and are now a recognised pest, creating environmental havoc. Several years ago, we were looking at small offshore islands around Tasmania that had invasive species and how we could look at removing some of those species and uh, one was obviously Tasman Island. We'd done some work there many years ago in the 80s on a feral cat population but unfortunately hadn't got rid of the cats then. Just about everywhere you walk on the island you just find dead birds. You look under a rock there'll be sort of piles of dead carcasses going back a number of years. So it was really obvious that cats were having a significant impact. Tasman Island has large colonies of seabirds. There's short-tailed shearwater, sooty shearwaters, and we're believed to have the largest fairy pine colony in Australia here. So from a seabird nesting perspective, there's a lot of values on this place. As cats are the only feral mammal we have here, once we get rid of them, you know, the island's basically back to a natural state. I operate Pennycott Wilderness Journeys and we showcase the southeast corner of Tasmania. Quite a few times we'd come along and we'd see cats on the cliffs and on one occasion we got a photo of actually a cat on the cliffs themselves. The project is jointly funded by the Tasmanian Government and the Wildcare Coast Conservation Fund. Robert Pennycott from the Tasman Island Cruisers Company is the main sponsor of the Wild Kea Coast Conservation Fund uh, and Rob has kindly donated you know, over $60,000 to the project and that has enabled us to go ahead. Before starting the eradication process and to ensure the best possible plan was developed to remove every cat from the island, the team needed to collect information on the extent of the feral cat population the distribution and movement patterns. They also needed to determine periods of food scarcity driven by bird migration. The project recommended that we start with a poisoning baiting operation followed by a trapping operation followed by active hunting. The idea with that is that cats don't associate humans with a threat until it's too late. My role has been the development of the poison bait that's been utilised on Tasman Island. So we're calling it Curiosity Feral Cat Bait. It uses a toxin called para aminopropiophenone, or PAP for short. To deliver the bait, the toxin was embedded within a specifically designed kangaroo meat sausage. This bait being uh, it's a kangaroo meat and chicken fat sausage uh, has been highly palatable to feral cats in, in pen situations and it's been then since proven in field situations. We had 20 cage traps and 30 leg hole traps that we put out. We decided to go with cage traps in the boulder fields initially till we reduced the numbers and then we could target an individual site with leg hole traps. The plan is that we have some trained cat detection dogs. Uh, the dogs will be used across the island and locate cats through scent. The dogs will indicate the cat presence, then the hunters will focus on that specific area to um, locate and kill that cat. We've also walked through the scrub here. Yeah. Um, just no sign of cats, you know, of course the dogs' noses will be a bit better than ours. Yeah, but, yeah. And um, Justin and Paul and the others walked through the scrub here too and didn't find didn't anything. Didn't find anything. Our bait drop was undertaken on the 3rd of May. The last cat we have located was on the 15th of May. So we have a 12 day period between starting the actual operation to finding the, what we believe is to be the last cat. The final stage of the process 
is continued monitoring for 12 months after the sighting of the last cat. This monitoring involves monthly trips to check remote sensing cameras, the continued ongoing use of trained cat detection dogs, as well as spotlighting and searching through the boulder fields for any cat sightings, or any evidence of cat presence, which could be revealed through scats, prints or fresh bird kills. Our vision for the island is to see it return to its natural state so the birds can nest here without the threat of an introduced predator. The seabird numbers will be increasing. The diversity of seabird species nesting here will hopefully increase as well. Because it's a national park, the island will be secure and be restricted to development, so it'll be a fantastic conservation showcase for Tasmania. <laughs>